If only Kevin McLeod would know that the part of the symbol was played by a triangle every week. <laughs> he would be honored, I'm sure. I uh, somebody asked me to post the uh, the my setup in a podcasting forum, and I did. And uh, the first comment was, "That's a nice triangle," because <laughs> it was sitting where I usually put it. And like, yeah, I play it twice a week. What's for good a geek, and what what's for sort of true? And they're like, "No, really, you, you don't, do you?" I said, "Yeah, I do." And everybody in the house is grateful when they hear it because they know dad's gonna shut up soon <laughs> oh that's nice that's nice well yep. so thank you everyone to everyone rather that did tune in live this week we hope you enjoyed it we're here for a couple minutes in the post show and if you're catching this as we post it on youtube later we take a few minutes after each show and shoot the crap with the listeners and talk about random stuff yeah thanks for showing up suncast mike a uh, guy named Stephen and Dane, thank you very much for being with us tonight. We really appreciate you hanging out with us. And anybody else that I miss that happens to be streaming the YouTube. I saw Stephen in the chat talk about how no one wants to talk about last week's episode. I listened to another um, general geeky TV podcast and... They they were like, how come how how come the showrunners just didn't let the person stop? And I, I don't think they realized that the man himself actually wrote it because yeah. they just kind of talk about it. they don't break down the episode like we do with director and writer and stuff. And I'm sitting there with my headphones on, going, uh, the big man wrote it. And I think everybody was like, the big man wrote it. Yes, Mark. Yes, Mark. Um, like you, you can't do anything about it. Just the Phantom Menace all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like the Phantom Menace, but I realize a lot of people don't. And I realize a lot of people are like, if somebody would have just told George no, it would have been fine. And uh, yeah, I think Mark Guggenheim had one of those moments. So Mark, I mean, if you happen to listen to this, thank you very much for bringing us the CW TV DC network. But uh, dude, don't do that again. <laughs> Just don't. It's it's not going to go well for your fan base, as obviously is shown with the ratings. And we also talked about it on Better Podcast, not just with this particular situation, but other situations of bringing political things into podcasts, because we both, Stephen and I, have listened to other podcasts that have done. It's so easy to do right now because there's major hot button issues going on out there. And we're like, that ruined that podcast. I turned that podcast off that podcast over there didn't know what they were talking about so you really got to be careful with this sort of stuff from our perspective from the podcasters i can't imagine what it's like to actually be a content creator and having to make those decisions but mark oof, yeah. oof. but on a lighter note breaking dc movie news that i'm seeing courtesy of scott snyder retweeting something on my twitter timeline ben affleck has tweeted welcome to the bat cave matt reeves so they signed a deal with matt reeves to direct the batman movie it would appear that's nice. In better news, there's talk of Nightwing being made into a live movie. I want to be, look, those of us who appreciate the male form do not have a lot of characters to like Google and Google over. Um, like, I, I'm sorry, but the major casting part of this is like, please turn around and show us that ass because <laughs> that <Fair>. is... <laughs> Look, we don't get much, okay? You, we just don't get much. So was night, there, but were were there rumors for a Nightwing casting for the TNT? It was TNT, right? TNT Go Titan show. He was supposedly going to be on that. The the real thing that's going to be interesting with Nightwing is whether they continue to go. We have to be dark and gritty because we're DC Comics movies. Because the Nightwing character, while there's elements of dark and grittiness to it. Dick Grayson's a fairly happy and well-adjusted person despite the tragedy in his backstory. And so he makes quips and he makes jokes and has positive, healthy relationships with his friends and people around him. So hopefully they don't try and change the character to fit the mold of things they're looking at. With with Jeff Johns having oversight over the DCU movies, I'm hopeful that's not the case. I had to cut off the Nightwing comic, the Rebirth comic. Because the first arc that they went through, I finished it, but then I was like, I can't go any further with it. It wasn't that character. It was a different character. Yeah, yeah, and you've got to say it right. It's Rebirth. I'm sorry, Neil. 
Rebirth. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it for this week. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. We'll be back here next week, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and we look forward to seeing you at Geeks.Live in the chat room. We will see you guys then. Bye, guys. Bye. Toodles. <laughs>